Okay, so for example number three, that is again, prove that the vector field given by B, big F right here is conservative and then find the potential function. So for sure, we know that the vector field is conservative. That's why they're telling us to prove it, right? But we still need to check all conditions. So we need to check uh, three conditions. That is a total of six partial derivatives. And again, first of all, you might want to label this as our M, N, and P. Okay. So, uh, we want to show number one that M sub Y equals to N sub X. Okay. So, M with respect to Y, that equals, is that 2X? And then n with respect to y, that's zero, the derivative of uh, with respect to uh, y. I mean, n, is there a typo here or? Oh no, it's n with respect x. n with respect x, that is 2x, that times zero, right? So first condition satisfied. Number two, okay, we need to check, we need to make sure that uh, partial of n with respect z equals to p with respect x, that is, partial of p with respect z, p with respect x, rather, equals to m with respect z, okay? So, partial of p with respect x, well, there's no x's, that equals to zero. Partial of m with respect z, there's also no x, no z's, so it's zero. So, second condition, satisfied, all right? And last but not least, we need to check whether n with respect z equals to p with respect y. Is that the case? Okay, n with respect z, okay, so that's 0, that's 2y, equals to p with respect y. Oh, that's also 2y, right? So, satisfied, satisfied, satisfied. If at least 1 fails to be satisfied, well, number 1, Double check your work when finding the partial derivative or this given vector field is simply not conservative. All right? Okay. So let's find the potential function. Now that means we need to integrate m with respect x. That is the integral of 2xy dx. So that's the, the integral of 2x, which is x squared. So that equals to x squared y plus a constant that depends on y and z, all right? Because we integrated with respect x and we're looking at a three variable function this time. Number two, that's the integral of n dy, okay? So that's the integral of x squared plus 2y z dy, okay, the integral of x squared, well, it's a constant in with respect to y, so that'll be x squared, x squared y, plus the integral of 2yz with respect to y. So if we integrate the quantity to y right here, so the integral of 2y, that's y squared, z, plus a constant that depends on x and z. So that's our second partial integration. And the last one, that is to integrate p with respect, uh, p with respect, z. So that's the integral of y squared with respect z, which is y squared z plus a constant that depends on x and y. All right, notice how in the result of these three integrals, we have results that look similar, we have uh, terms in common, but again, how are we going to write our potential function phi of x y, z. No, we're not going to combine like terms. So let me highlight the different. So that is this term. It's equal to that term. And also we have other kinds of terms such as, what's that? y squared z, y squared z. Okay? So no, we're not going to combine like terms. We're going to take one sample of it. One of the yellow ones, that is x squared y plus y squared z so that is our potential function and of course 
you guys and I know that there is a constant of integration, right? Involved because that's the result of uh, computing indefinite integral. But again, my lab mat is not asking you for that case. All right. Again, don't add the don't add like terms. All right. It's just take one of it. That's the, the tricky part. Just take one sample of it. All right. Otherwise, what would that be? Maybe minus 500 out of 10. We're adding them together. That's unfair. Yep. Yeah, minus uh, minus 500 out of 10. All right. Okay, the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Okay, guys, you know the fundamental theorem of calculus. Integrate f of x, you get of little f, you get big f, evaluated uh, upper limit minus lower limit. So we're going to obtain something similar here. But um, but the line, the fundamental line integral, fundamental of Fundamental theorem of line integrals uh, does not apply for just for any line integral. There's conditions that need to be satisfied. Okay, let's have a look at this preliminary example to make connections. So here is where, where we're going to learn, again, that easy way to solve the problem from before. So we're going to do a problem uh, in a way that we did it before. Okay, so consider that vector field that uh, driving force uh, to move a particle along two different paths. It's not, uh, it's two separate problems, but we're going to look at some similarity. That's the purpose here. So number one, we're going to evaluate the same integral along C1, that is the arc on x equals to y squared from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And C2 on the arc by y equals to x cubed from 0, 0 to 1, 1 as well. Okay, how about Plot these two. So plot, okay. Y equals x cubed. That looks like this, all right? What about x equals y squared? What's the, what's the graph of x equals y squared? Mm -hmm. It's a parabola. It's a uh, what kind of parabola? Let's be more specific. Sideways. Sideways parabola, right? And this is the point 1, 1, okay? So that's 1, 1. This is 0, 0. All right. So let's call this our C1, okay? The trajectory that takes us to the point from the point 0, 0 to the point 1, 1. So again, there is many different ways to go from... Uh, from the point from, from, from point A to point B. In this case, we're doing two cases. One case along the sideways parabola and along the uh, the cubic function. All right. Okay. Let's evaluate this. Uh, actually, so these are type two line integrals. All right. So here is the thing. Okay. Along along C one. Along C one. That is. Okay. C one. That's our, oh, we need to parameterize this function, x equals to y squared. So we're no longer parameterizing lines. We're no longer parameterizing circles, all right? Remember that example I showed you how to parameterize functions other than line circles? Okay, what do you think we should do here? So in this case, how about give t the independent variable? But be careful, which one is the dependent variable here? For y, x equals to y squared. Which one is the independent variable? Uh -uh. So which one is the input here? Isn't that y? And the output is x. Careful. So input, t, what's the output? x equals t squared. And that's going to take us, in this case, from t going between 0 and 1. How do we know it's between 0 and 1? I mean, we're going 0, 0, 1, 1. Plug in the value of t for 0 and plug in the value of t for 1. Okay, what are we going to do? Find the differential, I think. Yes, the differential dr that equals 2t, t, t, okay? Oh, wait, 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 that's 1. 2t and 1, dt. And, well, our big F of x, y, that is, uh, what's that? xy squared, comma, x squared, y. Okay, we need 
a function of t. That is. Okay, and careful. Let me highlight this. So, okay, x is with green, y is with red. Okay, substitute, substitute. Substitute, substitute. What is that going to be? Okay, so that means this is t squared times y, which is t quantity squared, comma. t squared squared times t. What is that going to be? Big F of t. That equals the vector t to the fourth comma t to the fifth okay we have everything we need to evaluate this type 2 line integral let's go for it okay so the integral <coughs> along c1 of f dr dotted with dr that equals the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the fourth t to the fifth dotted with what's that uh, 2t comma 1 dt that's the differential dt right this one right there okay let's do the dot product come up with a scalar in the integrand and integrate <clears throat> so that's going to be okay um, the integral from 0 to 1 t to the 4 times 2t that's 2t to the fifth t to the fifth times 1 plus t to the fifth dt which will be the integral from 0 to 1 of 3t to the 5th dt. And the answer to this integral equals a half. All right? Because that's going to be 3t to the 6, which is t to the 6 over 2. Over, yeah, over 2. Okay, so 1 half. Okay, let's evaluate the second integral. Okay, I mean, it's the same integral, but this time along the trajectory x equals to y cubed. Now you'll see how this setup is going to change. All right? So, for y equals to x cubed, let's parameterize. Again, how do we parameterize this cubic function? T to the independent variable. T to the independent variable this time. X, right? X, I mean, uh, 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 T, and T cubed, right? Okay, so, oh, what is that going to be? 0 to 1, agree? That goes between 0 and 1. Plug in T equals to 0, 0, 0. Plug in T equals 1, 1, 1, all right? Unless we were going to the point, I don't know, 2, 4, or 3, 9, I don't know, all right? Okay. <clears throat> So, what do we do? Okay, dr, or oh, the differential dr, that'll be 1, 3t squared. So, now let's call for big F, the driving force. That equals, again, it's the same driving force here, right? So, that is xy squared, x squared y, all right? And again, let me highlight the components. So x will be on the axis and y, the y components will be on the y's here, all right? <clears throat> the y variable to write this driving force f in terms of t. Okay, so this means big F of t that equals, okay, x, which is t times, oh, careful, t cubed squared, comma. Uh, what's that? Oh, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. Do I have the correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have the correct. And then t, which is x times, I mean, quantity squared times t squared, which results into... What is that? t to the 7th, t to the 5th. Okay, so that is our driving force in terms of the variable t. I'm just wondering, where did you get t cubed for the Oh, okay, because when we're uh, parameterizing a nonlinear function, we give t to the independent variable, as we did it before at the end of 17.2. So if x equals to t, 
y will be t cubed, the result of substituting t in the independent variable x. So, okay, so that's big F of t. And we'll have everything we need to evaluate over C2, F dotted with dr. That is the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the 7th, t to the 5th, dotted with 1 plus 3t to the 2nd, okay, dt. All right? Dot product, t to the 7, oh wait, no, no, it's not a plus, this is a comma, right? So t to the 7 times 1, from 0 to 1, that's t to the 7, and t to the 5th times 3t to the 2nd, that's plus 3t to the 7, all right? That's going to be the integral from 0 to 1, yes? Uh, for f of t, is it supposed to be... For the y component, t squared and t cubed. t squared, which one? one on the oh, yeah, yeah, this t cubed right here, right? t cubed, which is the t to the fifth here, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, thank you. So this will be uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of 4 t to the seventh dt, which results into 1 half. I mean, integrate to get, to get 4 t to the 8 over 8, isn't that a t to the 8 over 2? That's going to give us another another half. All right, so we got the same result despite we integrated along two different paths. Okay, let's keep looking at more stuff right here and put stuff together. Okay, let us see. Determine if f is conservative. If it is, then find the potential function for the vector field. Okay, so number one. So F, our vector field is x, y squared, comma, x squared, y. That means because it's a vector field in R2, all we need to show is determine, it, all we need to show is that the partial with respect of n with respect y equals the partial of n with respect x. Okay, let's see if that is true. So the partial of m with respect m is that a, uh, I mean, the partial of m with respect y, is that 2xy? While the partial of n with respect x, oh, that's also 2xy. Hmm, interesting. So it is conservative. So because it is conservative, this means this vector field it's the gradient of some of some uh, of some scalar function. Let's find that scalar function. That is the integral of m dx that equals the integral of x of y squared with respect x. Mm, that is equal to x squared y squared over two plus c of y. You know some constant, right? While the integral of n with respect to y, okay, that's the integral of, what's that, x squared, y, dy, same, x squared, y squared, over 2, plus some constant that depends on x. And well, what are we going to do? Put together this result. Well, in this case, we have only one kind of term. Again, do not combine them together. Otherwise, if you take the gradient, oh, it's not going to be the same as the original vector field. So our v of x, y, uh, that equals x squared, y squared over 2. And again, you guys, know, you guys and I know that there is supposed to be a k, right? I put it in parentheses just to make a, a distinction what we are supposed to do versus what my lab man is asking to, to input in the program. All right. <clears throat> Do you notice anything interesting so far? All right, so let's see. Uh, let's look at the definition in the next page. So what is it? If F is a continuous vector field on an open connected region and all that, okay, there exists a potential function phi, that is, if it's conservative, if and only if, oh, the integral, it's simply evaluated at 
phi of b minus phi of a. In other words, what this definition is telling us that if uh, if our if our vector field is what's that? It's uh, it's conservative. We don't need to parameterize anything. We don't need to do any of the uh, of the stuff we did in the previous section or what we just did here, right? Potentially. So this means we all we need to do is integrate, find the potential function, and evaluate it at the top limit minus the lower limit, like the fundamental theorem of calculus. But in this case, it's the fundamental theorem of line integrals. That's for a uh, part. That's example number four. Use the fundamental theorem of line integrals to evaluate the integral from our preview on the previous page. Okay, so that means, what do, what, what do we have? Okay, number one, F, our force field or our driving force. X, Y squared, X squared, Y. What did we get? The potential function, that is, the scalar function whose gradient is that function, big F, that vector valued function. So that is x squared to y squared over 2. Now, what are we doing here? We're going from A, that is the origin, to the point B, the point 1, 1. All right? <clears throat> what do we need to do? Okay, what are we going to do? So the integral along C, whatever C, and it doesn't matter, could be that sideways parabola, could be the cubic, could be a quadratic, your favorite way to go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Uh, that's of FDR. That is simply phi of B minus phi of A, all right, which is phi at the point 1, 1 minus phi at the point 0, 0. So, but well, what's phi? Isn't that x squared, y squared over 2, evaluated between 0, 0, and 1, 1. All right. What do we do? Upper limit minus lower limit. What is it? That is 1 squared times 1 squared over 2 minus 0 squared times 0 squared over 2. Ah. Isn't that 1 half? Yep. So that means the so the fundamental theorem of line integrals tells you that you don't have to parameterize anything only if your vector field is conservative, all right? However, if the vector field happens not to be conservative, there is no way around. We would need to know how are we going from point A to point B. Right? Let's have a look at another example and keep working with the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Okay. Consider <clears throat> the line integral of the R, the usual integral that calculates the work done by a driving force along, uh, uh, along uh, a trajectory C for a particle moving. So it's a piecewise smooth curve from 1, 0, 0, 2, 3, 1, 4. Okay, be careful here because notice it says it's a piecewise smooth curve. They're not telling us which curve it is, right? Actually, they're not telling us any information about how do we go from 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 4. And the driving force is 2xy squared z y plus 4. Determine whether, number one, determine whether the fundamental theorem of line integrals can be used to evaluate this integral. If so, use the theorem to evaluate the integral. Okay, how do we know if we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals? What would you do? Yes, you. What would you do to determine if we can use the fundamental theorem? If f is determined that f is conservative, right? So let's see. So that means uh, is m with respect to y equals to n with respect x. Okay, so this is m, n, and p. Partial of m with respect y to x, n with respect x to x. So far, so good. First condition satisfied. Number two. M with respect Z, is that equal to P with respect X? Okay, M with respect Z, oh, no Z at all, that's zero. P with respect Z, oh, no Z, no X's either, also zero. Second condition satisfied. Number three. <laughs> and with respect Z, is that equal to P with respect Y? Okay, 
and with respect z that's one p with respect y that's also one okay great the three conditions satisfied how about that right how about that all right so that means we can find a potential function uh, for which we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals again be careful if some of the conditions is not satisfied then it's not conservative or double check your partial derivatives it, it happens right it happens you know ah what is it okay so that means we need to retrieve i mean think about it what do you guys prefer do you prefer to integrate or do you prefer to parameterize funky functions what do you find better huh well, it depends, right? I mean, if the if the integrals uh, become complicated, I mean, like uh, uh, what's it called, like an integration by parts or something. Well, I think it would be better if we know uh, a trajectory. But what if it's not given? Well, then we're doomed, right? So the, it depends on the situation. So that's the integral x squared y plus some c of y z, the integral of n dy that equals the integral of x squared plus z dy so the integral with respect y what is this x squared y plus y z plus a constant that depends on x and z and number three the integral of p with respect z that equals what's that <clears throat> the integral of y plus four dz okay uh, that equals what's that x z i mean no, 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 y z plus 4 z plus a function or a constant of x and y okay let's highlight the different results okay so i'm going to use yellow to highlight x squared y with x squared y do we have another x squared y i think that's about it right what else do we have looks like we have a y z and another y z here right and lastly we have a 4 z okay 4 z so that means we need to come up with what's that phi of x y z equals to x squared y again do not combine like terms just bring one of each that's why i'm color coding them just so to bring one of each color okay x squared y plus y z plus 4 z so that is our potential function but again in spirit there is a, a constant of integration there all right could be zero why not right yep what was the only way to find the it's it, it's long. It, it, it's long. It's crazy. I mean, it, it's it's even crazy and funky for the 2D version. I don't want to know how it's done even with the with the three variables. So, well, actually, you guys have done this before. I mean, those of you who have taken differential equations, when you solve the exact equations, you did this partial integration to come up with the solution to the exact equation. Maybe that remind this this should remind you of that, right? Or if you're going to take differential equations, when you solve an exact equation, you would be a, mm, kind of like finding the, a potential function. You'll see the connection when you take differential equations, okay? So now let's evaluate the integral. So the integral of C along C of F dotted with dr, okay? So that's simply phi of 3, 1, 4 minus phi of lower limit 1 0 0 okay so how are we going to evaluate this well the potential function x squared to y plus y z plus 4 z evaluated between 1 0 0 and 3 1 4 all right <clears throat> i mean basic arithmetics right basic algebra and arithmetic number one upper limit okay uh three squared times y which is one plus y which is one times z which is four plus four times z which is four 
minus, okay, do you guys agree that everything is going to get zeroed out for, uh, okay, that is, let me do it, okay, let me do it, that is 1 squared times 0 plus 0 times 0 plus 4 times 0. And simplifying all this madness here, it's going to be equal to 29. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the what ifs here. Okay. So everything worked nicely here. What I mean by that? Well, so we had a nice, a nicely behaving vector field. That means it's conservative which means we can find a potential function so we could use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Now, here is the thing. What if the vector field were not conservative? What would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. What would you do in a situation where this vector field is not, is not conservative? Can you still use the fundamental theory of line integral? No, what would you do then? But what are you going to parameterize? Let's look at the problem here. So C is a piecewise smooth curve, but they're not telling us which one, right? They're not telling us what, which one. Can we make up our own, our own function? No, no, we can't. We can just make our own. So. The answer to that would be, there is not enough information. That would be your, your answer to that question. Huh? Yep. Unless you say, oh, the segment that goes from that point A to the point B, or the curve in space, whatever that is. But no, in this case, there will be not enough information because you will see. I'll show you why in a, in a second. And that, uh, I believe this is to wrap up the se almost to wrap up the section. Okay. So independent of the path so okay so here is the thing let's let's summarize in a in a line what, what all this means so the result of the fundamental theorem of line integrals like that as we described before uh, it's essentially telling us that the integral the line integral is independent of the path in the prescribed region because I mean again remember that a preliminary example we did parameterizing along the sideways parabola and parameterizing along the, the, the cubic function, we got the same result, right? And it turned out that the, uh, the vector field we were working with is conservative, so there had to be a connection. Well, the fact that uh, uh, if f is conservative, then we can use that fundamental theorem of uh, line integral. So, if f is continuous on an open connected region, then the line integral FDR is independent of the path, if and only if F is conservative. All right? Okay, so let me go back to that preliminary example. Okay, let's go back here. So that means that if you're given a, a, a conservative vector field, then you don't, need, you don't need to know how do you go from point A to point B. That is the origin and one one. Because, and we already, see, and we already saw it, right? Didn't we get the same result? Evaluating along the sideways parabola and evaluating along the cubic. So that means, okay, that means we can uh, evaluate this line integral, I don't know, along a straight line. Okay, repeat the process if you want along a line. Not right now, but repeat it uh, when you have time. You should get a one half as well. Uh, I don't know, maybe you want to start at the origin, maybe at this point, this, this trajectory, that one, and then that one. You will have to parameterize one, two, three, four lines, right? Do you want to parameterize four lines? Things, but not things. Right? But you should get one half. How about this diagonal line, this horizontal line, this other diagonal line? Well, three diagonal lines, well, I mean, three lines, uh, it's not too crazy, but still, it's not going to be efficient. Do you really need to parameterize? I mean, in the case that F is conservative, do you need to know how to go from point A to B? Okay, all right, do you want to go in this direction? Okay, uh, starting from A, do all this, all that. Do you want to do that? Uh, I mean, it's possible, yes, finally I got to point B. Good luck parameterizing that, uh, 
that, that function. But if you can parameterize that function from A to B, you should get one half as a result. That's what, uh, what the fundamental theorem of line integrals is about, and that is how related to conservative vector fields, and that is what the independence of the path is about. Do you want to go about, I don't know, maybe Mickey Mouse? No, I wanted to do Mickey Mouse curve, but uh, <laughs> yes, and you can do it, or a Batman or a Pac-Man curve, yeah, whatever you want to do, you, 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 can, you can do it. Okay, let me do Pac-Man. Yes, it's gonna be like, like this. Uh, no, I don't think it's gonna come right. Uh, I'm terrible at drawing. I mean, you can tell, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. I think you get the point, right? You can go from point A to point B without knowing how. And you don't care because if the effect is conservative, then it's a good way to bypass the parameterization. Remember what I told you about that? Yes. That, that little loop in the middle that you made, it, does that make it still conservative? It's still conservative, yeah. It's still make it conservative because I would have to parameterize this C, then C2, C3, and then C, the remaining C4, all right? So, and it's still gonna give you a one half as a result because F is conservative, it's independent of the path, all right? Okay, let's go back to the notes. Isn't that a very powerful theorem? So, okay, so what is it? Okay, definition, a region in the plane or in space, it's connected again if two points in the region can be joined by a piecewise smooth curve, as we can see in, a, in the yellow picture here. So, the theorem says that in open regions that are connected, the path of, independ of independence of, a, of the integral, it's equivalent to the condition that if it's conservative again. So let's have a look at one example. Hopefully, there it's it's enough time. Uh huh. Mm, okay, I think we have enough time. Yeah, of course. Okay. So consider the force field given by F. Show that F is independent of the path. You know how. Uh, and calculate the work done by F on an object moving along a curve. All right. Are they telling us which curve? So, number one, this force field better be conservative. Because if it's not conservative, what would your answer be here? Not enough information because we cannot just parameterize uh, uh, however we want. No, we would need to go. We would need to know, I mean, uh, what's, uh, what's a parameterization. Number one, okay, let's show that is, uh, so M with respect y equals to n with respect x. So m with respect to y, that's ln of z, equals to n with respect x, that's the derivative of x is 1 times ln of z. Okay, so far, so good. Number two is m with respect z equal to p with respect x. Okay, m with respect z, that's uh, the derivative of ln of z, that's 1 over c times y, all right? That is y over z equals p with respect x. Okay, the derivative of this quotient with respect x, that is the derivative of x, which is 1 times y over z, right? Oh, so far so good. We need to check one more condition. And the last condition that is n with respect z equals to p with respect y. Okay, n with respect z, that is the derivative of a ln, which is 1 over z times x, that is x over z. And lastly, P with respect to Y, that's also X over Z. Good. The three conditions are satisfied. All right? So this means, okay, F is conservative. Therefore, the integral of F dr is independent of the path. It's independent of the path, all right? So that means we don't, we don't, we don't need to know how to parameter. In this case, well, again, they're not telling us how do we go from point A to B, and well, it's good to know that F, of, that F is conservative because that means we don't care how do we go from point A to B. Straight line, a curve, uh, Mickey, close curve, your favorite way to go from point A to B. Doesn't matter, all right? Okay, 
Uh, so let's find the potential function so we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals, right? Okay, that means, uh, what's that? The integral of m dx, that equals the integral of y ln of z dx. Okay, it's all y's and z, so that's going to be xy ln z plus some c of yz, right? The integral of n with respect to y, that is the integral of x ln z dy, that is another xy ln z. And again, don't combine them together, just bring one of them, plus c of x z. And lastly, the integral of p with respect z, that equals the integral of xy over z, dz and the integral of 1 over z dz is in that ln oh xy ln z plus c of xy all right only one term this is great isn't it because we don't have to evaluate too many terms unlike the previous examples now let's come up with uh, the potential function phi of x y z that equals again only one instance of each because in this case there's, I'm not going to highlight them because that's the only term we have. Do not combine them. Do not combine them. That is x, y, l, and z. So what happens if you combine them? Okay, three. Find the gradient of that. Isn't that going to give you three times the gradient? And again, the gradient is uh, it's going to give you rates of change. Those rates of change of change are going to be three times as much as the original one. So that's how, that's how uh, the result would be changed by combining these together, okay? And again, you guys and I know that this is plus some k in spirit here. So that means work is obtained by evaluating the integral along c of f dr, right? And because, number one, this vector field is conservative, that means... Uh, the integral is independent of the path, which means we can evaluate, we can find the work done by the force by using the fundamental theorem of line integral. All right, Let's go for it. So that means phi at what's that? Three, four, eight minus phi of one, one, two. That is the potential function we just found x, y, l, n. Z evaluated between 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 8. And all right. Okay, so this is, uh, what is that? 3 times 4 times ln of 8 minus 1 times 1 ln of 2. What is this equal to? Uh, that is 3 times 4. That's 12 ln of 8 minus ln of 2. And we'd better simplify this, right? We'd better simplify this uh, because do you see this ln of 2? Do you see this ln of 8? We can write that number 8 as a power of 2, right? This is the same as saying, check this out, number 1, 12 ln of 2 cubed minus ln of 2. And then use the smackdown rule for logarithms. You know that rule? Basketball smackdown. Did I show you that one? Fine. Yep, so when you have a ln of x equals to ln of x to the a power. When you, when you use this property of logarithms in this direction, what is this, basketball? But if you're doing it in this direction, that's the smackdown rule. All right? Smackdown, basketball, okay. Smackdown, 12 times 3, is that 36? 36 ln of 2 minus ln of 2, 36 minus 1 equals to 35 ln of 2. And that is our final answer. That's the value of the work. And in this case, well, it's a positive work. That means uh, um, it, it, it's helping the object. The force is helping the object move along the trajectory, right? Yes.